Thank you, Zimbabwe, for tuning in to yet another informative edition of your program. This is Agriculture on New Directions, Agribusiness, in support of Vision 2030, where we discuss business fundamentals in the agricultural fraternity right here in Zimbabwe. Now, if you look at the agricultural value chain, it is very decorated and it has various stations emanating from research. This is where we find most of our researchers coming in with various breeds, genetics, to enhance production. From research, we go on to production, where we find most of our Zimbabwean farmers. Then we go on to processing, marketing, and consumption, which is the case of this episode today. We are going to be looking at the complete beef value chain here in Zimbabwe. And we have taken the liberty of coming here at Mudangadura Enterprises, where well, we are going to be looking at how they produce their beef cattle up to the consumption. The consumers are going to be purchasing beef meat from this place. At uh, this point in time, I have taken the liberty of inviting Dr. Nomeni Mutangadura. He is the part of the executive here at Mutangadura Enterprises, the son to Mr. J. Mutangadura. Mr. Uh, Dr. Mutangadura, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much. As we get into our discussion, can you give us a random synopsis, a brief background of this enterprise? How did it begin? Uh, the enterprise uh, began in 1992 when the farm was uh, purchased. Uh, from then on, 1990, uh, 2000, year 2000, we built uh, the Abeto. And actually the idea behind building the Abeto wasn't so much about uh, uh, marketing and selling beef. It was more about marketing and selling hides. Okay. Then hides were a very good a enterprise on their own. Uh, we subsequently moved around 2012 to uh, the production of uh, beef fattening. Okay. And the other parts of the business, which include uh, the meat processing and the retailing, were added on along okay. from 2000. Thank you so much, Doctor. That was very detailed. Now you would find that the value chain emanates from research, as I've highlighted earlier on in my introduction, which shows that you guys are thorough when it comes to researching this business. You, when it comes to the feed, to the breeds that you take care of. Can you maybe take us through the nitty gritties of research as you maybe uh, prepare your cattle up to the butchery? Thank you. As I've alluded, the enterprise is beef, for one to produce quality beef, you have to look at the total value chain from when uh, the farmer produces the beef, the breeds they produce, up to when you get into the abeto for the meat and then the meat processing. Uh, the major research which came through was actually we, by observa observation when we put up the abeto, like I said, we initially were concentrating on hides, but we noted that beef from the rural areas, which then we call tribal trust lands, were not as um, finished as the market required. We then introduced, uh, we introduced a, a beef fattening. Okay. A, through the beef fattening, we intro, initially we were buying straight feeds from the manufacturers and feeding our beef but subsequently we've introduced again the beef pro, uh, feed production okay. for the uh, beef Okay, thank you so much, Doctor. You would find that most of our enterprises in Zimbabwe, those who want to get into beef cattle or ranching, might end up saying that it is very costly, even that they'll be purchasing their feed. But here you are saying new research on the breeds and the feed or the nutrients that are required to ensure that the cattle is properly uh, fattened. The second stage comes on to production. Now we are talking of feeding your cattle. You are now producing the beef meat, which is what leads us to the abattoir. Can you maybe take us through your pen fattening process? What is it like? The duration up to maturity, where you'll be saying now this uh, cattle, this beast is now possible. We can now take it to slaughter. Can you take us through that stage and what it entails? Yes. The process through beef fattening starts uh, with your choice of cattle mm -hmm. for beef fattening, uh, as well as the plan which you put in uh, putting up the structures for the beef fattening, that is the pen fattening unit. Okay. From then you uh, move on to the actual feed making. We buy the ingredients which will balance our feed 
from the nutritional point of view, which is the proteins, the minerals, the carbohydrates, the fats, and uh, the vitamins. We take through our cattle an induction period, whereby as soon as they arrive, we make sure that we uh, vaccinate against the uh, common uh, conditions which you find in cattle, mm -hmm. like anthrax, black leg. Um, and then from vaccination, we give vitamin A to boost, because when they come in, they are really uh, not very fat. Yes. So yes. vitamin A boosting enhances the initial, uh, well, for want of a better word, physiological processes yes. in bringing up about a good beef and maximizing our feed. And then we also deworm oh. against the, the usual worms uh, which you find, which may be intestinal worms, which can be uh, liver flukes, which are liver worms. And um, after that, we are ready to induce or induct our cattle into the pen fattening. The initial period of fattening is usually two weeks okay. to see which uh, cattle are going to take on the feed we, uh, we, we give them. And also to acclimatize the rumen system into the more carbohydrate intensive or rather the maize uh, related intensive type of feed okay. which we introduce uh, to the cattle. That is a period of about two weeks. From then on, uh, the cattle uh, which are now acclimatized, are given uh, the um, feed which we make and it will take us, give or take, 90 days, okay. depending on um, the sex of the animal. If it's the heifers and cows, usually they tend to, have, to get fatter earlier than the steers and the bulls. But on average, it's 90 days, give or take 20 days for your cows and the heifers, and maybe up to 120 days, depending on the initial entry point of your steers. Let me just concentrate on the steers for now. When we bring in the steers, we usually bring them in from anywhere between 100, and, sorry, 250 kgs live weight to 350 live weight, kgs live weight. The ones that come in a 250 kg live weight tend to stay longer, up to say 120 days. The ones that get in, at uh, 350 kgs tend to fatten uh, quicker and we take them out after 90 days. Okay, yes. thank you so much, Dr. Mtangadura. That was very detailed. As we close this segment, can you just touch briefly on those breeds that uh, you've been in the business for a while? There are breeds, of course, that you say, ah, this one, you know, Nzguirachkaf, quicker, or this one, ah, let's stay away from it. Are there any breeds that you have discovered to be your favorites or most conducive for this business? Uh, in general, all breeds will fit in. Okay. And in general, you are going to get within the breeds the, those cattle which will not take to pen fattening. But they are much fewer okay. in terms of uptake. Therefore, even as you can see, we have got a mixed uh, set of breeds. Mm -hmm. Closing in from the Mashona, we've mm -hmm. got the Brahman, the Boran, the Bonsmara, we've got the Thule, and even some cross of uh, Eriford, we also get uh, the Bonsmara and the Beef Masters. Okay. In general, that is the uh, way they may respond to the feed. But in particular, the most responsive breeds are particularly the Brahman, the Boran, um, the Cimental, and the Beef Master. Those are the improved breeds which tend to gain weight quicker. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Mtangadura. On that note, we're going to go on a short commercial break. We'll be right back with this and more in the second segment. Stay tuned. <laughs>
Thank you, Zimbabwe, for staying tuned to Agricultural New Directions Agribusiness in support of Vision 2030, where we discuss business fundamentals and ethics in the agricultural industry right here in Zimbabwe as we pave way towards achieving Vision 2030 as a country. Now, viewers, we encourage you to be a part of these conversations. Feel free to get in touch with the producer, Wazanai Manure. It is on 0772-807-506. Alternatively, you can like our Facebook page, Agribusiness with Wazanai. Leave your comments and suggestions and make a follow-up on this episode and more on our YouTube channel, Agribusiness with Wazanai. We also have various discussions taking place on our Twitter timeline. It's at Agribusiness 110. Dr. Mtangadura, we are here in the second segment. Welcome back. Yeah, thank you. Earlier on, we spoke of pen fattening. Yes. We spoke of the various breeds, yes. the feeding regimen, mm -hmm. the various activities that you incorporate to ensure that you are producing quality beef. Yes. In this segment, we are going to be looking at the abattoir processes. Yes. Can you talk to us in terms of establishing this abattoir as an investment? Is it a long-term or short-term investment? What does it entail to ensure that you have established a properly maintained abattoir? Abattoir establishment is a long-term investment. As I alluded in the early segment, this abattoir was built in the year 2000. That's 22 years ago. And the abattoir is the mainstay of the downstream and the upstream integration of the business. Mm -hmm. The upstream integration is the retail and marketing. The downstream integration is what we had discussed before, the pen fattening business and its value chain. When we talk the abetto processing, uh, first of all, I would like to say most of our beef which we slaughter in the abetto comes from the small-scale producers, okay. which is basically mostly from the rural areas. In general, that beef grades as economy and commercial. Okay. Here and there, you may find uh, those which go out of this grade, especially on the uh, J side, which is mostly used for meat processing, uh, as opposed to most of the pen fattening beef. That's one which uh, has got a higher value, which grades as choice beef, or super beef. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Mtangadura. Um, you would find that in as much as you would have pulled your financial resources together, you cannot ignore the fundamentals of human resources management. I could tell when we arrived, you have a very good relationship with your team. Can you talk to us in terms of management, your relationship with your workers, and the possibilities that are there if you work as a team to ensure that your consumers at the end of the day are happy with your products? Yes, thank you. Uh, as far as uh, the workers are concerned, we've got various production units. And within those units, you encourage whoever we put in the management position or supervisor position to do their best. Because if they are going to be always pulling their weight when they see you, <laughs> then you are not going to produce. Yes. And as I, I mentioned before, this enterprise employs over 120 people mm -hmm. and no single individual can, on their own, run the whole enterprise. Therefore, we have got these uh, segments where we allow some degree of independence in the management, as long as the goal in the production is a common goal. Thus, thus we get uh, the atmosphere which you alluded to. Okay, yes. thank you so much. I would also want to talk about the activities in the abattoir. When we were uh, by the stalls there, we saw that you would be pen fattening, you talked to, uh, to us in terms of feed, feed induction yes. and yes. stuff. When it comes to the abattoir, what are the activities that will be taking place? And also how many beasts are per day or per week do you slaughter? What are the processes like from the initial stages up to the final stage? I can see that through this window, we are seeing well-fed, uh, well-fattened meat behind us. Yes. Can you talk us to, to us in terms of those activities? Yes. In terms of uh, the activities, as far as the small-scale producers are concerned, when they arrive, they produce their documentation. Mm -hmm. We check the cattle versus the documentation, then we file. We uh, disembark the cattle, they are put into holding pens, uh, which are actually behind uh, the abattoir. Within that holding pen, we then uh, decide on those which are going to be slaughtered depending on the orders for the following day. We, we then, the following day, as early as 6 o'clock in the morning, we start uh, uh, the slaughter of uh, the cattle. The processing, maybe we may show you later. Okay. Uh, 
is basically uh, you stun uh, the beast, you remove the hide, next you inviscerate, which is the process where you take the, the in, uh, what is referred to as the innards, yes. or the intestines, the lungs, the liver, uh, the heart, you take them out. Then you clean your, what is now referred to as the carcass. Mm -hmm. After cleaning, you split your carcass into half. For the first 24 hours, usually that carcass is put into refrigeration. Okay. Uh, it may immediately be inspected by the meat inspectors uh, and the meat graders, or um, it is inspected after having been uh, put in the cold room. The meat graders will then decide on the alluded grade, either it's a J, a economy, commercial, a choice, or super. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Mtangadura. We'd also want to talk about the processing part now. From production, we are on to processing. What are some of the products that come as a result of processing and the various phases or stages that uh, take place in, uh, in processing? And maybe you can also talk to us in terms of the grades that you produce here. Uh, that our consumers, because I can see we have uh, different people moving up and about, your customers. What are those grades that maybe lure them or attract them to come to your enterprise? Yes. Uh, to talk about the processing, usually the, most of the meat, the carcass, uh, which the carcass and the innards are sold directly. Okay. However, when we do uh, the slaughtering, there are certain cuts which may not be consumed directly. Okay. For example, we have got what we refer to as meat trimmings and the fats. We take them aside. Those are now uh, used to do the further processing. And as I've, as I've alluded, there is a certain grade of beef which can be taken in as primary beef. Okay. That is also uh, processed. And the processing in this case is the production of the biltong, the production of the various uh, types of uh, sausages and within the sausage group there is two subgroups there is the sausage which you produce and is going to be cooked directly or there is the sausage that is actually cooked in the process of, in the production process okay and then sold as cooked the, a sausage. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. On that note, viewers, we're going to go on a short commercial break. We'll be right back with this and more in the third and final segment. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back, viewers. We are here in the third and final segment of your program, Agricultural New Directions, Agribusiness in Support of Vision 2030, where we are looking at beef cattle ranching, the production of beef, an entire complete value chain from research up to consumption. Now, in the segment prior to this one, we're looking at the abattoir, which is part of the processing and even production of the beef cattle, uh, of the beef meat. At this point in time, we are going to talk about marketing, which is part of the final stages of the value chain, marketing and consumption. Dr. Mtangadura, thank you for joining us. Thank you. As we get into our discussion, this final segment, marketing is whereby your profits or viability of the business is determined. Yes. You are a business person, you are an entrepreneur. Yes. Can you talk to us in terms of the marketing strategies that, are, that are maybe you've put in place to ensure that your product is acceptable to the consumers? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, the approach to the market uh, starts from the abeto. From the abeto, we've got the direct wholesale beef for those who come in to the abeto to purchase their beef. That's the first line of marketing. The second line is we are into retail, mm -hmm. we, whereby this combines the butchery sections. We, at the moment, we run four butcheries in and around the Roa. Uh, we send our meat and meat products to those uh, various places for the direct marketing. And then we've got the market, which is partially hidden, which is of a lot of the institutes, uh, or for those who actually add more value onto our product or the meat products. Uh, examples are the schools, the institutions, we've got restaurants, they do come in, they make orders, and we do deliver to them. 
okay? Can you talk about the satisfaction of your consumers? What are the activities or some of your strategies that you have to ensure that they are happy and they are always coming back for more in numbers? Yes. Thank you. Uh, with regards to customer satisfaction, it starts, like I say, in the marketing, at the production in wholesale. That is at the abeto. Uh, the lag time a person is attended to is very important. We attend to that. The next thing is the quality of the product. You have to meet what uh, the customer wants. I have alluded to the grades which we have in our uh, meat classification as far as the kettle uh, is concerned. Therefore, we meet them according to the grades. Mm -hmm. And we try and maintain the quality grades which uh, are required by the customers. Over and above the quality grades, also within the meat, we actually have to maintain a, for the products that's quite chilling. They have to be chilled, not rotten. For the product that requires a freezing, they have to be properly frozen a, to maintain a, the customer demands. Okay. Yes. Finally, as we round off this segment and this episode, you would find that there might be some people who aspire or who have been inspired to want to get into this uh, beef production business. Can you talk to them in terms of advice? Every business requires a certain level of dedication and discipline. We have our youth in Zimbabwe, those that are crying because of maybe unemployment or uh, lack of opportunities. But I've, I've said it earlier on that there are many opportunities that are presented along the agricultural value chain. Yes. Can you talk to our audience there at home in terms of this business, your recommendation in terms of dedication maybe discipline, maybe the various resources that you might need to set up an enterprise such as this one. Yes, I'll quickly sum up the value chain and from every point of the value chain anyone can come in and sit within that value chain. I'll start when we talk pen fattening, the ingredients that go into pen fattening um, from uh, the maize, maize bran, Talking, you notice we actually also use chicken manure. Mm -hmm. uh, we use the various protein sources like um, uh, we use a cotton cake, sunflower cake, a soya meal uh, occasionally. All those areas, being able to provide those mm -hmm. in any segment who enable someone to actually make a living out of that. From then, the very cattle we are talking about the production of cattle, we actually say they are what we call producers, mm -hmm. those who keep cows, to produce cows. It's one area where you find quite a number of people, mm -hmm. depending on one's ability. We buy from uh, those producers and some actually come direct to us mm -hmm. to sell uh, either the cows or the cowed uh, cattle. From there, we've got at the level of the abeto. There are various... Uh, inputs uh, which come into running the abeto. Of course, the obvious one would be labor, but there's a limit to the number you can employ. But there are various things like packaging, which we buy from other people okay. to bring into labor. We, there's various machinery, actually, mm -hmm. which if one is within that line of business, uh, they are able to provide a service to us. And then we come on to the retail and uh, the wholesale section. They when you buy our product, for argument's sake, if you are running a butchery, mm -hmm. if you are running a restaurant, or it's a school institute, then you are able to uh, get some form of employment mm -hmm. through that. Thank you so much, Dr. Mtangadura. That was very detailed. And you did talk to the youth, even women, because you'd find that there are efforts from our government to ensure that the community, the society is empowered. Yes. And here you are as a black person yes. running such a big enterprise and talking to us in terms of the nitty gritties that one is to incorporate if they are going to be successful. It was a pleasure having you with us today. Thank you for having me. From me, your host was the name Manure. I'm also on Instagram. It's a W Manure. And the crew behind the scenes. Have yourselves a fabulous evening. Thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs>